In this short video, I just want to talk briefly about public and special music librarians, that is music librarians who work in public libraries and in special libraries like special collections, cultural heritage institutions, archives, um, industry libraries, and so on. I think it's important to understand for when we talk about public libraries, the sort of history of music collections in public libraries, which is different from that of um, music collections in academic libraries where they're designed largely to support curricula. In public libraries, early on, um, most collections, both within and, with, and outside of music, were had the goal sort of, of democratizing education or allowing people to self-educate, allowing access to education to people of all social classes. And early in the history of public libraries for um, music, that mostly meant access to education and the appreciation of classical Western European art music um, and basic performing ability. So often that has meant an emphasis on recordings of classical music and on piano vocal scores, that is scores for performance by just a pianist um, and possibly a uh, with vocal, a vocalist with piano accompaniment. Um, usually very simple scores playable by beginner um, amateur musicians. Libraries have often also been venues for programming around music, especially uh, local concerts and um, sing-alongs for children or for special occasions like um, holiday sing-alongs. In current trends in public libraries, uh, collections have moved a lot more towards um, access to popular music um, and local music, both through collections of CDs um, and streaming access to popular music and through the collection of local music in particular. So libraries are focusing increasingly on collecting um, music that is not widely available on things like Spotify or YouTube, um, collections that are made of music made by local musicians that might not be accessible in those larger commercial venues, um, rather than in duplicating things that people have access to through those uh, through free streaming resources. There's also been a lot of movement towards the in academic and public libraries actually towards maker spaces, and you probably have encountered this in the form of 3D printers and um, Lego, Legos in the children's library, but there's also a move towards maker spaces for music, um, typically in the form of uh, technology like simple synthesizers, recording booths, um, access to digital audio workstations. Um, the pictures in the slide, uh, one is from um, a Chicago Public Library, uh, U Media, which is a which is a collection of teen spaces across different um, public library branches. Um, and that's Chance the Rapper at the opening of one of the bigger U Media locations. They often have instruments as well as synthesizers and computer workstations. Um, and the other picture there is uh, from the Mitchell Street Library in Milwaukee, where they've added these sort of tech lockers that allow teenagers especially, um, but also other users, access to um, recording booths and sound editing software. Uh, so you'll see an increase, I think, in emphasis on tools um, for music creation, technology, um, and in some cases, instruments, um, either with, for use within the library or circulating. Um, so those are some of the major trends in public library music collections where they're sort of moving away from um, appreciation of classical music towards creation of vernacular musics that, and local musics that are uh, particularly of interest to the community that the library serves. In special music libraries, um, it's a little hard to generalize because this is a kind of catch-all category, um, but just to give some examples of the kinds of 
places you might, the kinds of special music libraries that you might encounter. Um, there are cultural heritage sites and museums um, that could be music focused museums like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, um, or it could be broader cultural heritage institutions that might have some interest in music, um, like historical societies or um, local museums. There are also major research centers, music research centers, um, and independent libraries like the Newberry Library, for example, um, institutional archives. So uh, archives run by a particular music institution or corporation that might have um, archives that need to have um, a music specialist involved. Um, and special collections in and archives that are in university settings, which make them sort of a hybrid between a special music, um, a special collection or a special library and a university library, academic library. Because these positions are so varied, their responsibilities can be very varied also. Um, so just thinking about the ones that, that are less likely to apply to librarians in public or academic locations, special librarians are more likely to do um, a degree of independent research and identification. That is, they might be dealing with sources um, that are either created in-house or that are um, historical sources that are not easily identified and where you have to do independent research to, to identify what it is that you're looking at and describe it for users. Um, and that description might take the, the form of finding aids and bibliographies. Um, you may take the form of specialized research assistance, so helping researchers or um, other employees to access the materials. Um, so you might do more sort of actually doing you know, finding information for people rather than just directing them uh, to the right folder or the right service. Um, there are also public services such as um, reference and things that you do see in other types of libraries. Uh, but beyond that, there may be additional responsibilities for things like curation um, of exhibits, either physical or digital, uh, digitization of rare materials, uh, responsibilities related to data science and record keeping um, or to digital humanities, digital musicology uses of the resources. S music librarians in special collections or in special libraries may also have responsibilities for things like event planning, either um, if the institution tends to host conferences, um, events, uh, those things might need to be facilitated by a, a specialist there's more likely to be original and complex sort of cataloging of materials that um, are rare or unique so that they don't, you're not able to just do copy cataloging or use somebody else's um, cataloging as a start. You might have to be starting from scratch with relatively difficult to handle materials. Um, there may be responsibilities uh, for preservation that go beyond what we normally see in an academic library. Um, and those librarians who work with these more unusual collections are even more likely to be responsible for contributing to name authorities and controlled vocabularies rather than just using them. So we'll be talking later in the semester in more detail about name authorities and controlled vocabulary. Um, but if you are working with a, uh, materials for a composer that has not ever been written about before or ever been cataloged in another library, then you may need to actually add to the list of name authorities rather than just uh, drawing on what already exists. So no one music librarian is likely to be responsible for all of these things, but all of them are things that you might encounter in a position in a special library or a special collection. <laughs>